nine or ten of these lineups, I think. It's true. I think most of the tournament actually misread what the meta would be. That it's a lot more aggression than I think any of these players were expecting. Yeah, Fireback keeps complaining like a target yeah. warlock. I'm not yeah. playing in on who's got warlock. Exactly. It's, but I mean, there were a lot of warlocks here, but even so, we're into game one. And Pavel is opening up with Corridor Creeper deck. He is indeed. Pavel going with his one aggressive deck. This is the deck that made him kind of not want to ban Tempo Mage because he can pull very far ahead in the early game. But even then, it's far from a certain victory. And Aaron here, um, with a not too impressive start, keeping the Corridor Creeper here, it's pretty likely to get down to a very low um, cost very quickly in this matchup where lots of um, minions are going to be dying very, very quickly. So I could respect that keep as well, but... At is there an element that you have to keep Corridor Creeper because your opponent might keep Corridor Creeper? Well, yeah, it's kind, kind of, of have to... it's kind of an arms race, isn't it? Yeah. Where you don't necessarily want it that much yourself, but your opponent uh, might have it. Because if Aaron had a one-drop here, he wouldn't even consider it. He'd definitely be keeping the Creeper. Yeah. Um, but, but you know your opponent's going to keep a one-drop on their Creeper, so exactly. then you keep your Creeper. Yeah. That and thing happens. Now that he's found it, though, a way to activate his patches, he'll be a lot happier with this Corridor Creeper, can maybe curve out very nicely into this Vile Spine, because even though it's a fairly heavy hand, it's not that bad of a hand, all yeah. things considered. South Sea Captain's tidied up a lot here for Aaron. It just means that now you really don't mind just having to dagger up on turn two, because your next turns, as long as you don't draw that one in 25 patches, are so nicely mapped out for you. Yeah. Absolutely. And for Pavel, his turn's not particularly fast either. He's going to be looking to find some of those mid-game powerhouse cards, like a Cobalt Scalebane of his own, maybe a Chain Gang and Elven Minstrel to start fleshing this out before he can get to that Corridor Creeper. I wonder if Aaron is spending the time thinking whether to dagger up or if he's just spending the time whether to attack into the 1-2 with a dagger. Seems like a fairly straightforward turn. Maybe he's just representing having something to do. So if he attacks in with the... Firefly here, he's not going to want to attack him with the patches. Right. But that means he can have a two health patches rather than a one health patches afterwards, which is actually a fairly big deal. So I guess it comes down to, would you rather have a two health patches or a weapon? And I guess all things considered, you'd probably rather have a one two weapon than one extra health on your patches is effectively what he's saying here. Yeah, there's a lot of ways to kill a two health patches right. anyway. Exactly. So, or one health patches anyway, it doesn't matter. Oh, oh ouch. This has gone wrong in so, yeah, so many so quickly, tiny right? things In there just, just being completely blown out of the water. Yeah. Patches does nothing for nuance. He just likes to be Patches. That's right, because now not only for Aaron does his South Sea Captain turn now basically suck... He didn't attack in right, to the, the yeah. Firefly last turn, which would have been way better, obviously, had he known he'd just drawn patches. You have to play the odds, and he was incredibly unlikely to draw patches in that scenario. But, um... Yeah. And now he's got to reevaluate basically <laughs> his, his life at this point. <laughs> Everything is just not working as planned. And now he has the opportunity to just play. You don't want to put the captain down as nothing because you've got two pirates in your hand you want to buff. So did he, does he just attack in with patches and re dagger? I think he might have to. Maybe. You want to keep one of these one drops put as an activator for your vile spine. And you want yeah. to keep maybe the deck hand to be played on the same turn as the captain. So you've actually got a minion that doesn't get just vaporized. Mm. That wasn't a fun sequence event. And Pavel now, if he tries to work out what's going on, will never ever work out what's happening in Alan's hand. Yeah, the downside of this play... So the upside is you still have a patches in your hand. Uh, but the downside is you can't attack into anything other than the Firefly with your weapon on the following turn. Because you basically said, I'm going to attack into this again. And is there anything else you would really like to attack into on turn three? With a charging deck hand for three damage. Not necessarily, actually, because most of the minions that could come down from Pavel here have three health. Yeah, I, honestly, I think that Powell's whole turn is going to be spent trying to work out what just happened because Aaron didn't attack and re dagger on two. Mm, I Maybe that's, that's a really good And then good he point, did actually. attack and yeah. re dagger on three. This is not normal Hearthstone play. I think I think Powell probably knows roughly what he's going to do after two seconds here. The the rest of the time is being spent saying I can work out this guy's hand because he's just done a really weird sequence of events. <laughs> so I guess what must have happened. So he may actually. If he really, really gets into it, and he's the world champion after all, maybe he can work out the patches was drawn there. I think he very possibly could. He's probably either concluded my opponent sucks or he drew patches, which <laughs> it is in Hearthstone is very much the same thing a lot of the time. Wow. Yeah, this is Pavel. He usually concludes his opponent sucks, whoever it is. Right. <laughs> just how he rolls. I mean, it's all relative, isn't it? 
And so, yeah, now for Aaron, the patches here is pretty nice because it does the same job as the deckhand, and you yep. can keep back the higher attack deckhand for a slightly more impactful play a little bit later on down the line. And it's pretty nuts that you enter into a rogue game going into turn four, where both creepers in the starting hand still cost the full seven yeah, mana. That's ridiculous. Another thing there about Aaron's just uh, picking up that it's Bone Mare, by the way. I think that one of the cards that Pavel will think is in Aaron's hand was Bone Mare. I was going to comment on it before it was picked up. Ah, oh, right. And okay. now it's picked up. So that's kind of, I mean, it's a good card to pick up, but yeah. Pavel will put it on a very heavy hand and accidentally yeah. get it right. I mean, he'll be saying it's either Leroy, Corridor Creeper, Bone Mare, Valspine, Spellbreaker. Yeah, and now he knows like the whole hand by accident. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But now for Pavel, looking at something like... Well, I actually got a lot of options here, because now that he's got the Bone Mare, kind of wants to save the coin, actually, if he can solidify his board control by then. So maybe we're looking at Flame Elemental into SI7 Agent, and then you can get a decent amount of stuff on the board. But at the same time, you want to be getting Corridor Creeper down on this turn. I think he might turn. know there's a Corridor Creeper in his opponent's hand. Was that kept? The left-hand card was kept, right? Yes, yeah. That so is the one card that was it? kept. What can it be from the way this game has gone? It's Corridor That's Creeper. That's true. What card do you keep but not play till turn So make four? your own Corridor Creeper not cheap enough and make your opponent able to play it might be an issue here. But at the same time, he's got very strong reactive plays to a Corridor Creeper. If that does mm -hmm. come down here on turn five for Aaron, it's not zero mana. So he yep. can't go Koval and Creeper. It's going to take up most of his turn. And then Pavel can go either Coin Valspine with a Creeper or maybe Shadow Step Valspine, things like this to just get that really strong tempo play and hopefully lead into a Coin Bone Mare on the very next turn. Yeah, it's, it's whoever gets that Bone Mare down first onto a, an empty-ish board that is usually miles ahead. Obviously, the Vile Spines, if you can save one of those somehow for Absolutely. a rainy day, will put you in a better spot. But Pavel having the board and having an almost identical looking hand is in a really good position here at the moment. Absolutely. And I think having considered it a bit more heavily, obviously getting the Creeper down for Pavel would have been nice last turn. But I like this even more because he's doing it on turn five. He's looking to get this Creeper down, which means he can go Coin Bone Mare on turn six. You want to vomit as much as you can before the Bone Mare turn. So even if a Vile Spine comes down from your opponent, you can still guarantee yourself that Bone Mare hit. <laughs> Pavel, he's, he's assumed the same thing as you. If I can hit Bone Mare on one of my minions first, I probably win. And Aaron obviously knows what is up here. Bone Mare is a lot of this matchup. And that's just a testament to how everything went wrong in that 1 in 25 pickup of patches all that time ago. He's now just playing... He's just throwing this out there. He knows this, this is dead on board as it is. Yeah. So a very interesting turn for Pavel here because looking first of all at something like uh, attack everything to face, shadow step, the SI, and then Valspine. Your corridor only costs, costs one and you kind of actually want this to cost zero right now right. as much as possible so that you can go creeper in combination with Valspine. But then you're looking at instances where you have to play the coin. You can play Leroy as a removal spell, kill all the dudes, and then you can actually use your corridor creeper for zero. Like, okay. I know Leroy is normally used as a finisher, but actually in this exact position, it's not a bad way to occupy the board it's and true. keep your vile spine back for a rainy day. Because with a double bone mare hand, you're not going to be just creeping over the finish line to kill your opponent. Yeah, you're you're going to be absolutely destroying right. them. Yeah. I don't think he will go with that, but it just, it's just a way of using Leroy in a very tempo-based way. Yeah. I actually wouldn't hate that. This... Okay, this, this line of play, I think, leads him to a victory anyway, because yes, he is de uh, delaying the Bone Mare for one turn, but because he's got the potential for Shadow Step on his uh, Valspine Slayer, it means he can almost certainly get it out anyway. And just because every other line of play didn't quite perfectly right. work out with the numbers, you were always either using the coin or sacrificing too many minions. I like the look of your line of play of Leroy quite a lot, but with this line of play, you're giving yourself still the option for Bone Mare in two turns, but you're also just giving yourself the option for Leroy Lethal over the next turn. Or yeah, two. next turn is sure. actually lethal, and you've denied your opponent any taunt, so... Absolutely. You're challenging Aaron to have an answer, like Corridor Creeper's not an answer right now. Bone Mare's unplayable, mm -hmm. so you're really making it difficult for him to actually have the answers needed. He's and got of course, you've still got that Leroy Shadow Step if you really need it three or four turns from now. Thanks. Pretty risky. Go backstab, deckhand, creeper, vile spine for just a dump of the vast majority of his hand, take out three of the minions, I believe, and leave himself outside of lethal range, uh, and potentially actually setting up for uh, a bone mare of his own to land. Just going to tidy up, like you're saying, as much as possible here. 
Why do you think Creeper down, but not tightening up as much as possible? I was looking at the line of play oh. where you take out the Creeper, the SI, and the Flame Elemental, and you just leave a Valspine. But Aaron is very efficiently playing around the exact card of Shadow Step in taking out the Valspine over the SI7 agent, which means, yes, you're leaving more attack on board, which means you're kind of vulnerable, but Shadow Step here to take out the Corridor Creeper and clearing up the whole board would probably be a bit too much of a tempo swing in Pebble's favor, so I really like this play from Aaron. Pebble going fishing. Well, he gets to re-fish. I don't know if like, fish. <laughs> it's like pulling yourself out of the river. <laughs> I, sh I should try that sometime, actually. <laughs> Stop this sinking feeling. Oh, yeah, there we go. Um... Well, if it was right before, it's probably still right. Obviously, if you play the other one, you then can't even have the option of Leroy, so you've got to consider that first, as it's still a pretty strong card. Quickly. Yeah, you, it's not as good as it was into, last turn, though. If this wasn't going into turn seven, you could consider Leroy shadow step it back to your hand after attacking to face a lot more heavily. Uh, but because of the fact that you're so likely to see a bone mat on this turn, I like this a lot more from Pavel. Um. No. You should have something, so if your opponent plays Bone Mare, you at least get to play yeah. your own Bone Mare on something this way. I still think Pavel comes out on top in this instance. I I get the suspicion that Pavel could have optimized this a little bit more, maybe with uh, going for Leroy Shadow Step Back, going into his opponent's turn six, so that he can go for a very aggressive game plan and just try to kill off his opponent. Um, but because he's got the double Bone Mare, I think he's realized this is perfectly good enough and should win me the game the majority of the time. I wonder. Yeah, he's got Bone Mare into Swashburglar Bone Mare. Yep, sure. And he can even shadow step back He's a bone kind of That's a perfectly board, fine play. But it's still kind of tight. Now, Aaron uh, doesn't need to bone mare here, that's oddly thing. enough. Yep. He can clear without bone maring and put a load of stuff on the board. Thanks. That might be super tempting. That's actually really tempting. I, Slosh Burglar, I actually like that more. take out the one, two, clear the board up. You've got three minions versus no minions, a random card and a bone mare in hand. And that's what he's going to go with. Yeah. I think this is a really, really nice play. So we spent all that time saying about who gets the first Bone Mare wins, but this is all about making your Bone Mare stay yeah, after you've played it. Because what this does is it not only denies a Bone Mare hit on this turn, it very likely denies a Bone Mare hit on the next turn as well, while he plays his own on turn eight, because he's making sure that Pavel never gets a Bone Mare down in this instance. Interesting he chose not to use the Shiv there. Had the chance to cycle that there and then and leave the yeah. weapon up just to see what he can draw. Get another card from his own deck. <laughs> As Pavel discovers <laughs> once again that rogues do, in fact, have secrets. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Reading it just to figure out, eh, wait a second, what does this card actually do? <laughs> yeah, kind of working like a, a little misdirection. Little misdirection. Sounds like a book. <laughs> Not one I'd care to read. Hmm. So... He could, so he can shadow step back the Elven Minstrel here, which is obviously a very high value play, but it's a yeah. very low tempo. He's play got enough it. value in his hand to last till the Absolutely. end of this game already, right? Yeah, that's why I like this a lot more. He's really just looking now to find Valspine Slayer, I think, is the number one. Spellbreaker is fine, I guess, to deny a bit of the buff from Bone Mare, although it's not quite so impactful. Mm -hmm. I think he's trying to set up a situation where this sudden betrayal is actually gigantic. Okay. You just go if you can leave your opponent with a bone mare and a big buff bone mare minion and just have those as the only two minions. Maybe he's trying to get tricksy with it. But he's never gonna stick a minion at this rate. So what's Aaron thinking of this turn? Is he going for Swashburg right first? First, I guess, just to see what's going on. Maybe he gets something better. That, that feels like it should be the right play. Thing. He's still not considering going for the Bone Man. What do you think his thinking is there? Because on this turn, now it felt really appropriate for me to go for the Bone Man because you can still deny your opponent's Bone Man and right. really start pushing some damage to face. I feel if you're going to shiv, shiving last turn was going to make more sense in yeah. some ways, although it did protect the minion from getting killed, so he got, he got the use out of stuff, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and so in this instance, he's developed less onto the board than he would have done if he'd just gone for the Bone Mare. And his opponent still can't Bone Mare. And he's only developed this much onto the board because he got the perfect card of Bone Baron to fill out his mana. Maybe he feels he's so far in front that he doesn't want to walk into second Slayer. He was... Uh, yeah, I can agree he was playing around Slayer. But which... maybe he feels he's a long way up so that he can afford to... Because you don't just play around Slayer randomly the second one. It's kind of a... 
Yeah, in general, enough. that would be bad. So you've got to think you're a long way ahead to actually <laughs> bother playing Mount Slayer number two. And he is, you know, he's in a decent spot now because now that Leroy's gone, obviously you can't get the Shadow Step. Lethal potential for Pavel. And with no cheap cards in hand, or no cheap minions, I should say, in hand whatsoever, there's no way he can activate the Bone Mare. Going for Cobalt Scalebane feels pretty unimpressive. I guess maybe he I hopes that Sudden Betrayal can get some kind of a trick oh, onto Aaron. Pavel's playing double Spellbreak on his deck. Just check through the list. That's another reason not to be so excited about what Bone Mare as you would normally be. But even then, he can go Bone Mare and trade into his opponent's 3-3. That's perfectly fine sure. to mitigate some of the health. Then the Spellbreaker is getting pretty minimal value, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really disagreeing. I just That's got to be a factor in his mind if there's another yeah. Slayer and two Spellbreakers. Maybe that just adds up in his mind to, I don't need to do this. Yeah. I can absolutely... I can see his reasoning, but I don't agree with what I'm saying. From that yeah. Idea. And from Pavel on the same side, he's still left with both of these Bone Mares in hand where I just... I need to look back and analyze exactly what he could have done, but I just get the suspicion there was maybe some way he could more effectively have guaranteed himself a target for Bone Man. Given that he ended up using the Leroy anyway on turn six, exactly. and using the coin to remove something of the Slayer, it feels like he could have used Very the Leroy on point. five, and then had something to activate the Slayer naturally on six, or Bone Man on six, and this might not be stuck with his Bone Man. I hand think that at this was point. probably the play, because Bone Man. It's obviously not a combo card, but it's kind of secretly a card you want to save for the coin almost more than any other because Bone Mare on six, getting it down first, especially when you have two of them, is so much more impactful because when you hit the Bone Mare, you're ten times more likely to get the second one on the turn after. Yeah, he would have had, he had a sort of board of things that may have stuck something as well yeah. if he played that Leroy play. So in hindsight, maybe it was all right. Now for Aaron on this turn, we could just see double Vile Spine. We could maybe finally see the Bone Mare coming down, but now he's finally afraid of the secret here, trying to get the highest amount of damage impossible to play around the Vanish. Or whatever that new rogue spell is called. A bit like my neighbor's here. So this has worked out really badly for Aaron. That's how my neighbors treat me. <laughs> <laughs> it's just punch in the face when you leave the door in the morning. <laughs> All right, so quite a lot of value there for Pavel. And this value that he's been playing for some time without dying is starting to pay off, but he's going to take us so much damage from this 9-4. 9, in fact. If Aaron wants it. He may need to pick up an activator of his own, though, here. Activator into double Viral Spine would be possibly getting it. Ooh, get one. Yeah, Not quite. another combo card really isn't what he's looking for here. Because he he really, really wants both of these combo effects. Does he have another deck hand? Uh, I couldn't tell you. I'm trying to wonder if he can minstrel into deck hand into Slayer and clear the board. Okay. And then I think he wins the game if he has got another deck hand. He played one very early. Wait, minstrel into deck hand? Well, he has to get the combo effect on both. Like, oh, yeah. He, so he has to Vile Spine, which he can't do either. Yeah, exactly. So like, I'm thinking... Yeah, okay. Maybe he <laughs> just goes work. double Vile Spine here to kill off the 5-5 five, five and then smacks face. Like then It gets him a respectable turn. board and Tempo Ball Spide is very often a decent play if you just have nothing Bing. better going on. It's just with every line of, uh, you know, with any reasonable line of play, he ends up leaving a Bone Mare target because yes, he can clear everything, but then he's only left with a couple of Vile Spines on board and Pavel really has the potential to swing this back because he's miles ahead in card advantage. He's still ahead in health totals as well. Yeah, Owen needs a way for this 9-4 to connect face safely, but I don't think there is a good way for it to happen. So Aaron just relying completely on what he can find off the top of his deck, going yeah. all out on tempo. And I think this probably has to be the way he's going, because he's not winning the card advantage game anyway. He just needs to find enough stuff to push him over the finish line. Yeah, and he loses quite a few things on the spot for there, but none of those things were in Pavel's hand. Mm -hmm. But this is now just a wall from Pavel. This is really nice from Pavel as well. He had the option to go for Creeper and Bone Mare on that turn, but he knows that the Valspine Slayer is still in hand, um, which is maybe why Aaron actually should have played the cheaper one from his hand. Yes, he got a mana reduction on the last turn, but Pavel has complete information about Aaron's hand now. That's a really good point. This is the Let's only. Allow this, this was the one yeah. card. This was the only card, yeah. I think, apart from maybe Corridor Creeper, actually. Corridor Creeper and Bowman were the only reasons to go yeah. for this line of play. And hey, it worked out for Aaron in the end. And maybe he thought, I'm in such a bad spot that I have to get this lucky. And he is starting to pull it back. But at the same time, that wall is still very much intact with Pavel. And the Bowmares are finally 
going to start hitting the, bur the board like five turns after they could have Yeah, he's originally. played this so patiently with these Bone Mares, Pavel. Yeah. Um, again, we, we'd like to look back and see exactly how he could have done things differently, as you're having a bit of an ooh yeah. moment. I am. That spectral, spectral Pillager, it could see a Shadow Step on the uh, Swashburglar, play it again for, what, three damage battle guy? It's not actually that strong. Worth an ooh, though. Worth an ooh. That is definitely ooh worthy. How long can this go on with all these Shadow Steps? Feels bad, man. <laughs> yeah, this is just a play to play around Leroy, because otherwise there was lethal with attack in, Bone Mare, Leroy, Hero Power. So I like this a lot, because he just needs to make sure he's not dying right now, and then Pavel should end up winning this. Wow. Still not Looks lethal. like it's relevant, but I don't know if it actually is. I think that's just going to be game. Silence, attack... Attack in six. I think there's lethal no matter how you cut yeah, it. Yeah, you end up just dying to the second bone mail, I think. Almost always up. Yeah. Bone mail's trade, three, four kills, spell go run. You go down to seven, you bone mail, you do some damage, you hit with the face. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think this is over no matter what. And somehow from Pavel, I. I thought. I think although he ended up winning this game, he could have won it a lot sooner. But I think Aaron could have won it as well. Like he just sat on that bone mare forever at the that's point true. where, where Pavel true. was stuck stranded with two bone mares and a shadow step in hand. I think that's the thing. He should have realised that his advantage was he had board at that moment. He had tempo, and he needed to push that as aggressively as he could. And at certain points, he did going for the elven minstrel non-activated to activate the vile spine did give him very big tempo swings. Um, but at the same time, not going for the bone mare to start pushing damage when he could was the play that left him not with any real ability to close out the game. Yeah, this is a big deal, this mirror, because both players are playing Warlock, and neither Warlock is banned, which means that the rogue now, the losing rogue, has another matchup it just doesn't want to face, whereas the winning rogue is clear out of the way and doesn't have to worry. That's true. Uh, it kind of works in a beneficial way and a negative right. way for Pavel because his rogue uh, would have been much more significantly teched out to deal with his enemy's warlock but uh, his opponent's warlock has a much more anti-aggro tools than the standard one uh, but for Aaron with his rogue as I take a look at it now it does also have double spell breaker and Pavel's warlock is not a particularly anti-aggro one it's more right. of an anti-control one with the full Q block package with mountain giants thrown in there as well so it could very well come down to Pavel just wishing his opponent doesn't draw Spellbreaker at any point, which it very possibly will. Still surprised that we haven't seen a single Harrison land for doing anything in this tournament. There's That's loads of Harrisons, loads of oozers. I don't think any of them have actually landed a single museum piece yet. Yep. Well, people have just been uh, either banning Warlock right. or it hasn't been coming up as much as expected from a lot of players. We saw it from Tice in his Priest, I believe, maybe even in his Druid, although it could be mistaken there. Yeah. And he went up against an opponent that doesn't play Warlock. Yeah, five out targeted him. Warlock and he went up against an opponent who doesn't exactly. play Warlock. Exactly. And if you're bringing Harrison Jones, it's clearly the slower of the weapon removal choices. So it's more of an anti-control weapon removal as opposed to the ooze, which I think overall is probably the better pick. And if one of these players had been able to more correctly predict what the tournament metagame would be, they would have gone with ooze over Harrison. Yeah, I think that's right. And I think there were one or two oozers lingering about, especially in Very some possibly. of the decks from the Taiwan players, but I haven't seen any of them connect, like I say. Okay, <laughs> you've been looking forward to this one, I'm sure you have. Yes, so this is going to be the Warlock from Pavel. Up against Aaron's Rogue once again. The double spellbreaker is the real MVP and talking point here for Aaron because it does allow him to just completely deny the ability for Void Lord to close out the game, which very often you're just relying on on turn six with Lackey into Dark Pack to pull out that Void Lord and completely close out the game. But for Pavel here, going with Skull of the Minari, so clearly not going with the full removal anti aggro plan. Going a little bit aggressive, trying to get his own win condition online as quick as possible. It's, it is a very defensive win condition, though. You get all of the all very of the true. stuff that you play, like even Doom Guard. You don't have to hit him in the face, but it just kills five fives. It does just kill stuff. So it's actually a superbly good card. Assuming he draws a demon, but only before in the deck, I assume. Mm -hmm. So, and so for Aaron here, this stuff is decent. A swashburglar is probably a bit too slow. You know, you're weak to the defile. You don't really want one drops because they're not pushing enough. So he does get rid of everything because in this matchup, Keleseth is really good, obviously, and Edwin is kind of even better than it is usually because that is your window to close out the game. But for Aaron, <laughs> none of those things have come to fruition. This is a 
god awful start. Yeah, he hand. really needed that captain off the top there because this hand is horrific. And a fast start would have been interesting because Pavel's going to have to yeah. take quite a lot of self damage just to get these mountain giants online. It's going to be fine because they become 8 8s, but it's not like old handlock where you then taunt them up. Yeah. They sit there and get ignored if they're too slow sometimes. I mean, it's not the slowest start. You can go coin into captain here if he wanted to, but that leaves his subsequent turns so weak. So I can understand why he's going for this. But, uh, he has got, of course, Dark Pact and Cube in hand, mm. which is every player's nightmare to face against this deck. And Lackey as well. So we can see on turn six, Lackey Pact. Yeah, after a skull was played on five or a mountain giant on four. Mm -hmm. Seems good. Seems very good to me indeed. Just throwing down the librarian because whatever, it's probably not doing all too much in this matchup anyway. Hellfire, oh sorry, Defile will usually connect anyway in the early game. Yeah, and no pressure from Rogue. But the pressure is going to come pretty quickly now. These minstrels are going to sort everything out over the next two or three turns. But you're such an underdog as Rogue anyway, and in a minute, things are just going to get nasty. The thing is, though, for Aaron, actually, he's obviously a very unaggressive hand. Nothing to do on turns one or two. With Double Minstrel, he's got a super late-game oriented hand. He can just take this forever now, especially if he finds a Shadow Step to bounce one back. And so if he can develop a very strong mid-game with things like Scalebane, Creepers, maybe Bone Mares, right. then all of a sudden Spellbreaker could be the missing piece of the puzzle to push that lethal damage around turns 8 or 9. Yeah, Pavel can never leave anything unattended, like right. a cube or anything, and then the Spellbreakers will therefore get free reign on, on the taunt minions that are generated, because Pavel will have to deal with his own other stuff. And Pavel's going to have to... No, he'll be very careful about these Spellbreakers. And that's what Spellbreaker represents to Aaron. It's not even necessarily that it has to be in hand. It's just putting the fear into Pavel that he cannot leave anything on board. Sounds like something that doesn't happen very often is putting fear into Pavel. He's a pretty fearless sort of guy. He is indeed. He even wanted to fight me at one point. He wanted to fight me. He must be completely crazy. Wow, I mean, who would do that? I exactly. Yeah, no one alive. Wow. <laughs> Should have seen the other guy. <laughs> okay. Aaron looking for the best way to put some sort of pressure on this. Because all these minions are kind of utility right now. I kind of actually like the South Sea deckhand because, yes, you're weak to Defile then, but fine, you've baited out a Defile with two rubbish minions. Um, yes, it's weak to Mortal Coil, but going into turn five, they want to play Lackey, they want to play Skull, yep. maybe even want to play Doomguard, but not quite as much. And it just pushes a bit of extra damage. Yeah, and here's exactly what you're saying. This Defile would take up all of Pavel's turn. Yeah, exactly. So Pavel has the choice to miss, f just take another five to the face, which doesn't seem like any fun at all. Mm. He can play a mountain giant and, and hope it all goes away. No, I think it's got to be lucky. Well, you can't play mountain giant really going into potential. <sighs> yeah, especially spine. after a, a turn from Elven Minstrel, there's a really good chance that that uh, that the Valspine is in hand. But going for the Lackey, you're just as weak to Spellbreaker, and there's two of each in this deck. So you know, choose your poison. He's what are you weak to? He thinks the Defiling's okay because do you don't think he's Mountain Giant? He this could game? Mountain Giant, but that seems a little bit scary because you take five more, you're down to ten. Okay, that there's things that just kill you. Yeah, and over the next two turns, this is kind of a, a game plan from Pavel that is almost inconsistent I would play because he's keeping things like Skull of the Minari clearly trying to get his own game plan online as much as possible but then he's just not doing that obviously, well, I mean, there isn't, yeah. Yeah, obviously Skull <laughs> I think he I'm intended not he to do it but yeah. right okay so I guess the fact that he didn't get demons is probably the main reason that it didn't but work Lackey out but Lackey Dark Pact is so good next turn worst case he gets a Doom Guard and right. clears a minion okay. on an empty board I can see best that. case he gets a 3-9 it gets spell breakered and then you just get on with the game because your opponent's playing a spell break on turn six. Okay, but then why not play Mountain Giant on this turn? Because you're at 15 health, your opponent has five on board. Even if they play Lee Wine, you're a fine. Scary, I think. You're playing Dark Pack next turn, though. You have a All very right. good chance of getting a Void Lord. You're getting at least eight health back. And even if you get a Doom Guard, you're still smacking something else. And then you have a Mountain Giant on board to just blow up I think Vile Spine there. would be a bit scary there. You take five, they Vile Spine, then they spell break your Void Lord, you lose the game. That's, that's, but there's then, a lot of cards in this Rogue hand. But then you're never playing Mountain Giant for the rest of the game. Game because you're always going to be afraid of Valspine. There's Perhaps so you don't much play it to for the think of. The game. Yeah, maybe you just don't. Perhaps That's you win by just point. never doing it, just getting 100 Void Lords down. Sure, why not? Everybody's favourite card. <laughs> so much fantastic um, discussion and things that can be thought of.
right. all of which will have to be going through Pavel's head alone. Although I'm pretty sure there's at least three voices knocking around in Pavel's okay. head. I think you're right, and I think you might need them, because if that discussion was knocking around my head, I wouldn't sleep at night. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I often don't. And here it is going to be the Possessed Lucky. Void Lord to Pavel at least would seem a lot better. The silence is pretty devastating for him, however. But at the same time, even if it's a silenced Void Lord, once you cube it, a Void Lord is a Void Lord. Yeah. To unsilences, is what you're saying. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Once the cube dies, it will all of a sudden be a full, uh, fresh new Void Lord summoning a bunch of Void Walkers after it dies. And at some point, Owen does run out of silence. But obviously at the moment, Pavel has that cube, but he has no way of activating it, having just used one of his dark packs. Mm -hmm. That can change, of course, very quickly. Man, these are the games that just get really hard for Rogue, because with this many cards in hand, there's so many different lines of play you can go for. Playing the Spellbreaker this turn was not necessary, I would argue, uh, just to consider other lines uh -huh. of play, because you can just as easily silence it on one of the following turns, and it is a very impactful card. But going back to turn five, Pavel gave a bit of a clue that he wasn't happy about his health total. And actually, although I am going to go back on what I was saying for... Oh, no, it's Pavel on the cube block. Sorry, I was going to say I think that Aaron is not running the cubes, but it's uh, not running the Void Lords. It's fine. The, void, the Doom Guards, yeah. We'll get worry. onto that one confused. when he, when he yes, plays today. He is playing... But yeah, going back to turn five, deck. Pavel gave a little bit of a clue. You were saying he could afford to play the Giant and yes. um, and do that. He gave the clue that maybe he wanted that health total. So Aaron here going for it with the Spellbreaker, maybe getting a bit of a read that Pavel's hand isn't very removal heavy because of the way he was so desperate to clear up that five damage. I don't know if that's true. I think he'll actually maybe make not. the read that his hand is very removal heavy, and that's why he's happily tossing out a Defile, because he's got more okay. backup to come in afterwards to try and clear sure. up whatever's going on, which he does. He's got another Hellfire here, which he could use to completely eviscerate the board. But what he's really he wanting to do here... But what he really wants to do here, as I ignore everything you're saying, is to play that cube, not even yep. tapping to find the Dark Pact, because there's only one left in the deck, and he needs to be very cautious with his health total. But here for Pavel, at the very least, on the next turn, he can smack into the Elven Minstrel, go for Hellfire, pull out two Void Lords while he does that. Yeah, Pavel's health total is really precarious right now, even though it doesn't look like it. There's only oh, seven yeah. on board, but Leroy's another six, that's 13. And then any sort of reduced cost shadow steps would be so terrifying right now, going into the next turn. And maybe actually for Aaron, this maybe this was the reason to save uh, Void Lord because he had a lot of minion pressure in hand. And although you kind of think of Void Lord because of the memes as this impenetrable <laughs> wall, I always think of the memes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but, you know the the impression you have of it is that you have to silence it to get through it, which is simply not the case. It's not that much health. You can do it as the rogue. <laughs> Um, and maybe because of that, he should have saved the silence for the cube. Because in a situation like this, right. getting through two Void Lords all of a sudden becomes significantly less doable. The danger is, in some situations, Pavel doesn't let you get the cube. If you've got the second Dark Pack, for instance, you just lose. That's true. Spot. So and it wasn't you, an easy decision to have to make. If you leave it up, you're more vulnerable to Faceless Manipulator instead. I'll tell you what you're vulnerable now to, though. It's good old-fashioned Hellfire. <laughs> yeah, this... I mean, Pavel is still in a position where he's praying really, really hard that there's no silence effect. But, but he's actually, seen one already. Then, he's already seen one, and there's going to be two Void Walkers popping out here, so not even really that afraid of that now that he's I think about it. He's going to be on four, it. and that, that eviscerate <laughs> comment All right, mate. would have actually worked quite nicely. I know you didn't actually mean the card, <laughs> but as it happens, he'd be better than Keleseth right now. So is there any other play worth looking at? He can't kill off the cube unless he goes for health. Hellfire, sorry, I believe. There's no obvious faceless play. He's just looking at what to do outside of it, maybe. Can you afford to play the Cobalt and go... Is, oh, no, you can't go down to two because then you can get um, SI'd in the face. Very good point. So it looks like there's nothing else that makes sense. He but Pavel will be worried because this play looks for the world like Aaron's got the second silence. But even then, you get two... It's fine, yeah. You don't, you don't care about the second silence here. I was wrong to say that. Maybe he's trying to find a way to get a mortal coin out of this. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Like second so you're trading into a 3-2 mortal coil something after the Hellfire? Because everything yeah, dies okay. anyway. I was, I was cautious for a second that you might not see it or that maybe we were missing something. But yeah, going with this play, like this is perfectly fine. Filling out the rest of your mana, 
He could have considered going for some kind of other stuff, but it's just not necessary. This will probably win him the game in its own right. He just needs to find a healing effect so that he doesn't die to SI Shadow Step. Yep. And then all of a sudden, he is in an amazing spot. The um, the only downside, of course, is that finding that healing effect, he can't use any tap effects, he can't That's mess around. Point. And so last turn, he did have the option to put the cube into a different minion first and just use a mortal coil to cycle just to... He's out of card draw for now, but he values that one damage to a minion at some point as being more valuable than just wasting the coin and trying to find healing now. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, think I, I quite like that. to find some healing now, to be honest. Yeah. Because you can lose to SI Shadow Step. Unless we've seen both SIs, we've definitely seen one. You don't lose to much else, though. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Aaron really taking his time again with this rogue deck. Do you think he's going for Flame Elemental Bone Lair? That's what I'm looking at first of all, because Valspine to me, you don't want to play it when you've got nothing on board. You want to use it when you're pushing your advantage. And what are your win conditions here? They all involve like Shadow Step, like Spellbreaker, Shadow Step, Leroy, something. Yeah, it's something silly like that you're looking for, or a, the biggest Edwin ever, and there's simply no answer. Stuff like that. So I think you're trying to set up a board that is menacing, that doesn't let Pavel kill his Void Lords off. Yeah. So sure. that, that way, if you get the silent stuff going on, you will yeah. Derek's making faces here. Of, this it's is so just like, stupid. like he's just it's being so pummeled stupid. to death by Pavel himself. Oh, Void Lord's such a dumb card. There's just nothing that can be done here for Aaron with the Spellbreaker gone. I think that's the main talking point here for Aaron because he wasn't dealt the best starting hand, like two backstabs, yeah. which are still there. The Leroy is still there from his starting hand. Completely awful. But going for the value-heavy line of play with the Elven Minstrels and then going with a very tempo play of going for the Spellbreaker, yeah. I think that's the one thing you can debate. But for sure. I mean, I just felt he read the situation differently at the time, yeah. but, but for absolute sure, there were the things he could have done differently. Because if he if he goes for the Spellbreaker there, there's such a high chance that some other form of taunt comes down, be it through Cube, which is very likely in hand, or going for, I don't know, just maybe a second a Lackey with another Doom Guard, something like that. It was probably right, all things considered, but I'm just trying to find the way he could maybe have pushed this into his advantage somehow. So it is looking for all the world like this is going to go to 2-0 two, two to zero to Pavel, but then he has the Quest Druid left. And that Quest Druid is going to have to find a way to beat Priest, I feel. Which is, I mean, yeah, that's what it's there to do. That's yeah. why he's not banning Priest, but... I'm, I'm kind of cautious even to say that, though, because I feel like it's not going to be that favoured. Like, it still has to do Druid things. You have to ramp up to UI, yep. and then, yeah, you've got a very good shot of winning the game. Um, but outside of that, oh, wow. I mean, look at this. <laughs> How about another Void Lord? Oh, this game's <laughs> still going on, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. For all those who are interested in this game of Hearthstone, <laughs> just wait for the next one. That'll be more interesting. This one's done. This one is, is super done. Um, joking aside, actually, Pavel does need to find a way here to use this dart pack efficiently. Just <laughs> if you want to actually talk about the game in progress, which yeah, but he can just go what Spellbreaker you've two got to be void poorly walkers. If you want to do that, yeah, Spellbreaker two void walkers into the big horse, um, or maybe with a mortal coil, and then the two void lords into the little horse. You cube one of them. You dark packed one of them. Great, you Gucci. Okay. And everything I've taught you, I'm making it sound exciting. Okay, you sure? <laughs> As Pavel's just making sure he seals this one up, yeah. obviously. Yeah, so the next game. Please, save us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the next game. Looking at the tech decisions for both of these players right. in their decks, there's nothing that's going to harm Aaron too much in his priest. Um... If he were to go for that, even into the war into the druid, it could be his rogue once again, which obviously is going to have a decent matchup. The warlock, yep. I think, however, is going to really struggle because it doesn't have that uh, doom guard package in his warlock. He's still running cubes, yeah, but he's also running Nazoth. It feels like a kind of weird, slightly unrefined hybrid to me that isn't actually targeting anything all too much. You can cube Nazoth, that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the whole thing is a bit interesting. It's like. It's hard to know sometimes whether a deck is unrefined or whether it's been re-refined. Like, he's, he's tried stuff out and actually really enjoys it. So, I, I still think it's okay. I still think our deck will be okay against yeah. the Druid. I think it's only the Priest mm. that Aaron's got to worry about. But again, that matchup's pretty bad for Priest, I think. 
Yeah, I think that Warlock is really going to struggle here because it doesn't have that mid-game power that the full okay. Doomguard Q-Block affords you. Uh, but the Rogue is definitely going to be the way that Aaron has the best shot of taking it out. He has just lost two games in a row with it, but they were a kind of even matchup and a fairly unfavoured one against the Warlock. But even then, given that it had the full Doomguard Skull of Minari package in there, there is a real whiff potential against Aggro. Yeah, uh... I just really like the Warlock against the Rogue. I just feel that it's one of the, the best matchups in Hearthstone at the moment to be playing on the side of the Warlock. It's, mm. The Rogue seems so powerless. I mean, the Rogue is adapting. We've already seen Spellbreakers being put in. I'm sure we'll see other tech, whatever that might be, over time come in. Yeah. Sap. Yeah. There you go. Well, mm -hmm. there is a Keleseth in there, so that would be an well, just interesting take decision. Help, I think on RDU stream, it might have been... Frozen was playing Saps Correct me if I'm wrong. Life. Someone watching but must have seen Zap that. But you can play Sap Eviscerate. That deals with quite a lot of the meta yeah, as you well. So Sap Avis and Crab. It's that's worth the thing that's been happening. Yep, it has floated around before, most certainly. There's some um, ramp. Wow. But here for Pavel, he's been a player who I've noted is fairly liberal with his jungle giants. He's quite happy to toss it away in the aggressive matchups. Uh, but due to the fact that he had already a decent hand, got a good amount of ramp even before the mulligan, uh, and because Rogue has great late-game scaling potential, I like the keep of Jungle Giants here. Yeah, I think I agree. We've seen some keeps of Jungle Giants from other players that we didn't agree with. Mm -hmm. and But this one just seems so good, like you say, because you've got everything you need anyway. Yeah. And the Nourish is flexible in that spot too. Just if you do draw too much ramp, if there is ever such a thing, the, the Nourish can just double up as a way out of the card loss you make. Yeah, it's the classic coupling of Nourish, where the first one goes for mana, the second one goes for draw, and you hope to find some kind of removal or stuff to throw onto the board afterwards. Uh, and in terms of stuff to throw onto the board, that's what this Druid deck is kind of lacking from Pavel. The actual things that you can throw down is like Corridor Creeper, Malagos, kind of, but you want to save that for the combo. And the rest of it is just ramp, draw, and quest activators. Yeah. Just looking at how Aaron's even going to try and put the pressure on here. Is there any reason to just not work out the best way to put as much damage into face as possible as early as possible? You're not weak to any particular card, are you? Well, it's turn. Well, actually, turn one deck down against Druid is always a really interesting play because obviously, yes, you're weak to the hero power, but you need to look very carefully at how many cards your opponent kept. They're not going to be keeping many cards, to be honest. It's yep. basically just the early ramp. Maybe a Wrath, something like that. And he did keep the Jungle Giants, and he knows he kept Very the Jungle point. Giants, so he can work out a lot about the hand from that. But having said that, maybe this is not just because Pavel had a good hand. Maybe you have to keep the Jungle Giants in this matchup, and Aaron will know that. It's a lot of things to consider, and he clearly, I guess, doesn't have the read that Wild Growth is in there. But even then, these Fireflies are not that bad. It gives him a wide, fairly resilient board. Yeah, and if things start to go wrong, you try and trade these off before you get to Spreading Plague to mm. so get them out there, get the damage done. You've still kept an Activator for later, being a cheap card to activate any of those big things you've got. Ah, but there's actually a surprising turn. amount going right here for Pavel. He's got, after the Cursed Disciple and the Oaken Summons, four out of the five quest activators completed, assuming no silence comes down, which it very possibly could here for Aaron. Uh, in fact, very probably will come down here actually yeah. for Aaron on turn four. Uh, but then still loads of ramp. The Nourish can be used for draw if necessary, as you said, if there's so much ramp. And he's on more health than he started the game on. Yeah. But it is going to be turning up now yeah. for Aaron, because now that I actually look at it, maybe Spellbreaker isn't the play. You can go for deck hand and weapon. It deals with it much more um, in just as an effective manner, pushes more damage to phase. But denying one completion of the quest might come into play and a 4-3 body is not to be sniffed at at all. Yeah, going into the Spreading Plague turn, you want something on there that can at least try and deal with 1-5 things. Good point. But there is no Spreading Plague, and Aaron will know that after this turn, because I'm pretty sure Pavel just plays Spreading Plague immediately here if he has it. Mm -hmm. In this instance, though, the Nourish obviously gives you two full mana crystals, so you can play around with either Wild Growth or Wrath. If you even wanted to go for the Nourish, do you think that's a bit too risky relying on getting some card draw a bit too much or do you like just getting up your mana as quick as possible? if you're getting up the mana here the problem is you've only got the malagos mm. and if that gets vile spined you've just got right. a handful of nothing so it'll be interesting to see how he does go about it i think all things considered i actually really like going for mana here because if you're going for draw you can't play the nourish this turn it's too slow um but going for ramp here it means next turn you can go for malagos if you want to but even if not 
something like Disciple Wild Growth Hero Power is putting you in a decent state on the board. Not particularly impressive, but not awful either. I imagine he decided, and I might be wrong on that, of course, that if he nourishes, he doesn't wild growth, he gets to cycle that later. Mm, good because point. that's a way of getting one of those cards back. Not so worried about the card he didn't get from the nourish, it's the card from the wrath that he didn't get there, where he had to do three damage. Here, Pavel going all in on that Malagos. Right, however. and there is no Vile Spine. There's nothing to be done here against it for Aaron. Apart from trading in pretty much all his minions here, he does have easily enough damage to kill it off with backstab deckhands and everything on board. But that's a lot of stuff to be throwing into this Malagos. But at the same time, there's a couple of cards that have been in hand for a fair while now, which just sets off alarm bells. Yeah, you, you are think it's swipe. Fire, swipe, yeah. wrath. Things like this, even the Spellstone, they could just completely destroy what you're trying to do. And Pavel's kind of played as if he's got Swipe in his hand. Now he's just giving the old stare down yeah. and like, I've got Swipe in my hand sort of look. <laughs> of course I have. I'm the world champion. I've always got three Swipes, a Wrath, two Keleseth, and something else in my hand. Zakas, probably. Yeah, something like that. I'm sure he's definitely making that. Sure it's a bad deck. <laughs> um, so very difficult decision for Aaron based on that. He just needs to look into Pavel's eyes and think, is he making the I have swipe face? The newest and worst emoji. Probably get that from his channel if you sub. <laughs> he is in the end going to be killing off. And this is probably right, because the thing is, if swipe is in hand, it's over like instantly. His board is eviscerated. Malagos is still on board. And it's just completely and utterly over. But in this instance, he still actually has a very yeah. respectable board leading into oh Bone my Mare goodness. very effectively as the swipe is finally picked up for Pavel, which means it was an amazing clear from Aaron. I mean, even not being <laughs> results-oriented, I liked the clear from Aaron. Yeah. That's going to allow Pavel to set up this big board, and he is going to cycle that wild growth and use it. And remember, he used the Wrath for three, and I think that's at that point he decided to save this Wild Growth for the extra card, mm -hmm. so... Definitely. Wrathing for three ages ago to cut Spellbreaker actually worked out really nicely. It planned ahead to this point. And I mean, this is looking kind of scary for Pavel, obviously, because the Bone Mare comes down now, everything starts smacking to face, uh, and that's a lot of damage for Aaron. But if UI is picked up here, Pavel kind of just wins, to be honest, because then all of a sudden he's clearing up the board, he's gaining a whole bunch of cards, armor, board control, everything he could possibly want. That's not a UI. That's the complete opposite of a UI, I would say. I guess it is. You don't do any cards again in the armor or do anything. Yeah. Not particularly impactful. And a maximum of one taunt can be made here, but I think it's a necessary oh, evil. It actually for might be okay. It's yep. going to buy him a turn. Yep. And that's all he needs to do because he's pretty all in now, looking at his deck list on finding Ultimate Infestation, Malfurion. Uh, maybe Coon for armor could be decent enough to find a way to start fighting back on the board and make sure you're not dying to any burst damage. Swashburglar into Minstrel for Aaron next turn, though. Even though it doesn't win the game on the spot, it just draws so much gubbins. And gubbins is what he needs right now. A lot of gubbins. Yeah, it's exactly what he's going to get. And even if Pavel gets some of his own gubbins, it's going to be a bit slow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, hit for Aaron. Like, it doesn't. It, apart from the really impactful draws, like maybe another Bone Mare, I suppose. He just needs to. It's not so much about what he draws; it's about what his opponent draws. He needs to make sure that, or just pray that there's no UI from his opponent. And outside of that, there's nothing too devastating, apart from I suppose Malfurion to buy yet another turn. Yeah, I guess he's got to be awake. I think like Second Plague, but. Yeah, he'll he'll be playing around none stuff of like that as much as possible. None of it's I'm too sure. terrifying. Like you say, there's, there's plenty of terrifying things in there, but none of it that works in one turn. Okay, Leroy I'm... Swash. Hmm. Yeah, this this play is interesting with the Elven Minstrel because he could have gone Moonglade Portal on this turn, which makes a taller board, leaving himself less vulnerable mm -hmm. to uh, the. Sorry, leaving yourself less vulnerable to spreading plague. But at the same time, going for Elven Minstrel this turn means you can have Leroy. You know, it, it's not a nothing chance of getting Leroy, as you can see, it was drawn. Right. And go for it on the following turn to try and deliver lethal through no matter what. It also finds a chance of finding a Vile Spine, which yep. means that if, if Pavel just draws one big thing now, it's not enough. Exactly, stuff like that. Another swipe is picked up, and with what Moonfire and Hero Power, I just. 
get there. Even on board, maybe he can stay alive, but Leroy is going to be closing out this game in Aaron's favor. We were expecting it to go yes. this way, but Aaron finally, with his aggressive rogue deck, puts a win on the table after two losses, bringing it back up to 2-1. And Pavel is still trying to find a win with this slightly slower, much more vulnerable to aggro quest druid. So next up, I imagine we'll get to settle the massive, huge argument that will be happening about this, this Warlock. Right. It's, it's not been that huge an argument at all. It's been a mild discussion. It's true. And I think with this particular Warlock, I don't, I don't hate it all too much if you're banning Priest, because right. if you're getting rid of Priest, you don't need to put Doom Guards in your deck necessarily. You can just... Uh, go for the full Nazoth package, make it really, really good against aggro as Firebat and Purple are doing, uh, and also really good against the Mirror by putting Gnome Feratus in there. Yeah. If you're leaving Priest up for your opponent... Oh, wait, it was Priest... Priest was banned. Right? Priest was banned, right. Okay, okay. well, if you are going to ban Priest, then yeah, make it super anti-aggro. But if you're going to leave it up, then you can go for the cube stuff. Yeah. The cubes in this deck just feel slightly superfluous to me without the Doom Guards in there. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they play out. This is the sort of matchup where those differences will make a big difference. Difference is different, you know what I mean. I get exactly um, right. What's been really weird about this tournament is all the talk has been about the bits of piece of tech that people put in Warlock mm. for the mirrors. Warlock's just been either not brought or banned a huge percentage of True. the time anyway. So all the work has gone into the banned decks. Yeah. And so you're seeing something like Kranich has put the work into a lineup that isn't worrying about Warlock particularly. Yep. And maybe that's the way forward. Maybe the time has been better spent where other people are spending time on their deck that isn't even being played. Yeah, I mean, it's one of the biggest differences between ladder and tournament play at the moment is that uh, certainly around the ranks I'm playing, which, not 25, by the in way. In before. Yeah, <laughs> very funny I chat, I'm sure. Uh, there's so much to uh, so much control Warlock that aggro becomes so much worse. But in a tournament lineup, because there's only one super strong anti-aggro deck in control Warlock, aggro is still perfectly valid because you can just ban it away and have a very good shot as we see from Zixo in Seat Story and from Kranich here in this very tournament I'm queuing up the priest it doesn't matter which order he queues me but I'm slightly surprised to see this so well you just thought he'd get the worst out of the way first look that's how I feel unless yeah. he really feels like Warlock is that bad but surely you'd prefer the Warlock to the priest no matter how much you think it's struggling I can respect that but not getting off to a particularly good start at all all for Aaron and getting off to a very nice start for Pavel. Ultimate infestation in hand to get things going. Not even that bad. It gives you a goal to work towards. <laughs> Love how your 10 drop gets things going yeah. in this deck. It's true. It's, it's true. ridiculous. You don't do anything until you play your 10 drop. I mean, that's not how getting going should work. It, it's kind of a combo deck because obviously you're wanting to go Malagos spells yeah. with Moonfire and stuff. But the first part of that combo is the UI. You have to be playing that in order to get up to the point where you have all those combo pieces. Yeah. That is your win condition in this deck, basically, is getting to that point. Yeah, very interesting how it all fits together because the power of UI. Uh, I'm still a fan of just saying I think Jade just, I'd rather just make big green men and get UI win the game with those rather than go through the convoluted yep. process that this does but it does serve a good job against Priest in particular I can certainly agree with that and now for Aaron things starting to turn around with Anduin already picked up naturally off the draw mm. and now with a way to draw actually quite a lot of cards here if he was so inclined something like Northshire Holy Smite his own Acolyte heal it back up attack into the Cursed Disciple can draw a lot of cards but at the same time, using Holy Smite feels pretty bad because you really want to save that for the combo. Yeah. And just having your Acolyte die to this what Cursed Disciple anyway. Maybe you do just want to get some card draw out of it first. I though. mean, at the end of the day, this is a race. It's a race. Yeah. The reason that the Priest is not favoured is it's a race where Druid has all the like the turbo power and you're <laughs> crawling along. But sure. if you can crawl along and pick up cards along the way, you might not need to get as much mana as a Druid because your combo is far more straightforward should you draw it. Yeah, that's exactly right. And Aaron is going to go for it in the end. And I think I could actually agree with this play because, yeah, he's throwing away Holy Smite, but if he gets Raza on five and win on eight, he will have enough damage to close out the game. Yeah. Almost certainly. Yeah, it takes a little while for Pavel to accumulate the bits and pieces, so... Aaron's just going for it. He's trying to get the 5 8. The draw of Azure next turn. He's actually looking good. Yeah, he'll be looking very, very good if he can find Raza in a timely fashion. Kind of unfortunate for him that he's left with Circle of Healing now that his Northshire is gone. That was probably actually the main consideration with his main line of, with yes. his last line of play, is that this card now sucks for him. It would have been absurd if he could have found a Wild Pyromancer beforehand, drawn easily three or four cards. But in this instance, it's going to be doing nothing for the longest while. Maybe just cycling with Auctioneer. 
actually makes it not too bad, so that makes me agree with his previous play even more. Yeah, he's going to be able to get through this deck pretty quickly. The problem is now he's playing them in the wrong order. Like, if you really want to be quick, you would rather pick up the Raza before the Anduin. I mean, you don't want to be picky. You just pick them up as you get them, obviously. Yeah. But, you know, Raza on eight, Anduin on nine is nowhere near as quick. It's, it's only exactly. one turn, but you haven't got many turns. This Druid deck does assemble the pieces when unchallenged, and Priest doesn't challenge it. It's true. And while Druid doesn't have all too much ramp at the moment for Pavel, He's got a pretty respectable board to get things going, and, you know, Aaron really doesn't want to use Shadow of Death on a Magma Rager just to kill off his Cursed Disciple, effectively. So he's letting this pummel him in the face on two, three turns in a row now. Yeah, needs to find a method to get to that Raza. Just drawing it is a good method, but he's not managed that one, so he's got to find a way to, to force it to happen. Yeah. And it's got to be quick now. And now that there have been four quest activations, the potential what for a fifth already on board, with? Aaron needs to be very careful indeed because, I mean, just sticking Barnabas in the hand just as a five mana 8-8 eight, eight right. is so much just stuff for the druid to do all of a sudden. And maybe because of that, Aaron just bides his time, doesn't go for the dragon fire, and sets up for a psychic scream next turn. Because if he just heals face, hmm. doesn't throw anything onto the board, there's no way for the 5-1 to actually die. Yeah, and that seems to be what he's going with. Yeah. It could be moonfired, I guess, but obviously that's a piece of your damage going. That's actually a really interesting point, because yes, you're throwing away a piece of your combo, but you're playing an 8-8 eight, eight on this turn as opposed to nothing. Yeah. And it's the turn before Anduin, and you've just seen Shadow Word Death, so that will be connecting for 8, mm. which, if you look at it compared to the damage Moonfire could give you, kind of 8 damage versus 6 damage. It's a bit rough in terms of how you're looking at it, but it's not that far off as long as you assume it's going to live. But at the same time, that's assuming Psychic Scream doesn't come down. It's it's so risky no matter how you do it, because yep. just doing nothing and letting the priest develop their own stuff is risky. He's going to go for it. He's going for it, man. I think I like this play. We live in a world where you kill your own stuff to win games. <laughs> <laughs> what world is this? Finally, Barnabas is going to be played. Barnabas, the Stomper, throwing down here, reducing all cost of all minions, which means on the following turns, as soon as Ultimate Infestation comes down, things are going to get truly silly. It's a shame that animation is only seen like once every 100,000 games or something, because it's a really nice animation. Were you just singing the lyrics to Tribute on purpose? No. Oh, okay, never mind. Sottle does that to me all the time as well. Yeah. Just says things that he knows I'm not going to understand. Yeah, never mind, mate. Someone will You'll get that. Fun. I appreciated it. <laughs> and here for Aaron, he's kind of forced to use the Psychic Scream to deny damage because 13 is an awful lot to have attacking you in the face. But having said that, the Wild Pyro can clear up the 5-1 in combination with just the Circle. And then maybe you just hang about with that Barnabas to deal with it for Anduin on the following turn. Just hang about taking a stomping... A thorough stomping. I wonder. But nothing else looks much fun. Okay. Yeah. Going for the in the end. I think I can respect this because yeah. what's going to come down on the next turn? Maybe Malagos, I guess, actually, which is just absurdly good here with the faceless manipulator for zero. How does Aaron possibly deal with this now? There's also a chance like going with a screen that Pavel hasn't got the ultimate infestation although he's got a good idea from the opening hand Aaron, yeah. that, that second card along is the UI okay. so it could slow your opponent down from actually mm. drawing it if they just draw into another 5-1 they don't really need anymore I mean he knows that there's a UI in hand now because that yeah, last he's got a very turn, good, yeah. yeah 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 there's just I don't think you'd make this play unless you had nothing else to do from Pavel because the Barnabas was fine but it wasn't perfect but on this turn you're denying your ultimate infestation for another turn, and you're throwing out Malagos and Faceless, which is your win condition. But at the same time, how does the priest possibly deal with this? Yes, they can go mass dispel, but then you're whacking them for eight every single turn. Right. I've, I've seen this situation before, and the players don't like to go for it because they think uh, they're going to win anyway. Yeah. And so they, they like to hang on. But I do agree, if you're ever going to just plop it out two 412s in one turn that are dragons... That would be a pretty good time to do so. It would indeed. I mean, if he had nine mana and he was going into ten, I think he would certainly go yes. for that line of play. Because if he's met with anything other than Master Spell, UI does 15 damage to his opponent's face. 
Yeah, and like you say, even if they get mass dispelled, you're just hitting them for eight mm. anyway exactly. with damage in hand. Exactly. But I, I, players do like to respect the the healing that the priest has available as priest of the feast and in hand. So that eight damage, even though it comes in every turn, can still take forever to kill them. Whereas this way, you're going to win on turn 11 or 12 with just combo things. Yeah. And I think very possibly with that this line of play, he still goes for Malagos and Faceless before a UI. Um, but at the same time, UI is just so, so strong. You can get down. If you draw a Moonfire, you can go for that on the same turn. There's so much to consider here. And I mean, for Aaron, he should know that in this deck, there's actually very few targets to hit with Shadow Reaper Anduin left in the deck. Now that both Disciples are gone, it's basically just corridor creepers that are left and maybe uh, the Forgotten King as well. So this turn was played in the end by default because the only two choices really were this or, or go for something with Gadget Sand. Yeah. And the rope got to a certain point where it's like, you can't play Gadget Sand now, yeah. it's too slow. So the turn almost forced itself because he couldn't make the decision the other way in time. Uh, but this looks fine, obviously. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is fantastic. I, I, I'm not saying that Pavel made the wrong play necessarily because I'm not sure what works out better. They both end up very, very nice for you. But with, I guess with this line of play, he's thinking, how do I ever lose? Because I'm likely right. to get Moonfire, I'm likely to get Second Faceless. All of a sudden, I'm dealing so much damage to burn spells. I'm putting so much minion pressure on and the board. And I've got 43 to get through. That's that's not a thing a priest can do to me quickly. Yeah. Even if even if Aaron has Raza, which he doesn't, Pavel's probably got three turns. That's probably almost guaranteed lethal at that point. Although at the moment... He hasn't quite got it. Yeah, unfortunate for him that the Spellstone cannot target face because, unfortunately, that would give him, if not Shadowy lethal, thoughts. very, very close to it at this point. Just what we need, a one-mana face stone that does, like, 48 damage or something. <laughs> I miss Living Roots so much. No. It was one of my favourite cards of all time. The Karazhan-era Arcane Giants Druid with Malagos. <sighs> my favourite deck ever. It was a nice deck, to be fair. I love that. But yeah, for this instance, Aaron, the fact that he went for Raza last turn, yes, there were, a, or Anduin last turn, sorry, there were a couple of targets that did pop up just then, but fine, you have the Dragonfire to mop them up. That deals with pretty much everything that could come down for Pavel. Ooh, and now Oaken Summons pulls a random minion from the deck because all minions cost zero, so they all huh. cost less than four, so anything can be pulled from the deck now. And actually looking at what's left, I think it might literally just be Forgotten King left Stuff in the deck. Stuff got shuffled back. Stuff did get shuffled back. That is a fantastic Don't point. roger me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's not where that we want to be. can't become a meme, you big, big bully. So, <laughs> I mean, if you lose that, you're going to be a meme for a little while. Yeah. Afraid, well, but yeah. Oh, I suppose Barnabas was shuffled back, but it costs the full mana anyway, so it wouldn't be able to be pulled from the deck. Jade Blossom just looks so out of place in his hand. <laughs> it's like make a 1-1 one, one for 3 mana <laughs> everything else is making like a million a million for naught mana for no one. so I guess here Oaken Summons given that I believe it will pull a uh, pull the Forgotten King 100% from his deck uh, that sets up for lethal on the following turn with Malagos Faceless Faceless into a Moonfire maybe there's just something I'm missing um, he's, I mean he's vulnerable to it just being killed off then which yeah that does suck but <laughs> yeah. if it's not there, then you just win. And I kind of feel like... How much Pavel is this Moonfire is... next turn? Well, it's what, up to 6, up to 11, up to 16 damage, That's I a lot believe. Of damage. It is a lot of damage indeed, but it's not lethal for Pavel no matter what because right. he went with this line of play. Darkness speaks yeah. to me. I think, I think he's... I have not played that much of this deck, but I think he's being too conservative with his combo pieces. He should have known once the scream's gone down, the dragon fire's down, Malagos is a dragon anyway. I don't think there's a hurry, is my argument. Okay. I think he's on 43. His opponent hadn't got Raza at the point where he was counting it. Darkness 43 takes some me. doing for a priest. It's a lot, lot harder than, say, 32, 36. Mm. Yeah, it is. It's not like... Yeah, it is seven damage more than 36, but it feels like it, it plays like a lot more because at that point the priest runs out of cards, so it's like an extra turn or two, okay. even though it's nowhere near double or whatever. I'll agree with you, I'll agree with you. I think Pavel, while Pavel could have won earlier yeah. on in this game, in this instance, I'm not going to therefore say that it was the correct play because obviously he will know that in certain scenarios where Priest or Beast or Raza right. or Velen comes down very quickly, then he's just locked out. It's just game. all those nines again that you were talking about earlier. Yeah, absolutely. Nine, 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 nine. <laughs> So now for Pavel, 
One damage off lethal, I believe. Um, one, two... Yeah, one something. Whichever way you cut it is one off lethal. Yep, one damage, one mana, exactly. Chat lethal. Can't quite get there. And that's why I prefer yeah? okay. the Oaken Summons last turn, I think. I think I'm getting the interaction correct where it costs zero and therefore you can summon it from your deck. I'm pretty certain. Mm. What? But yeah, now here for Pavel, he just needs to think... How do I... Do, can I die next turn? And the answer, if he doesn't do anything to the board, is right. yes, he, he could can. potentially die. So he needs to take countermeasures to prevent against that as much as possible, whilst also leaving his combo fully intact. Because with this line of play, he's made it so he not only has to... Well, he's made it so he's more safe, he's less likely to die, but he has to keep his combo all completely together. So just making sure he has infinite health again. Yes. Okay. Well, I guess because the Cursed Revenant was shuffled back in, he had a 50-50 to get right. the Revenant or the, the Forgotten King, which was the main deliberation here, I suppose. But okay, There we go. Next turn, it's over. Right, okay. So ne this way, he's taking it super, super slow by going for Malagos super combo, then Kun to refill his hand, yep. then go for UI. And again, by okay. gaining that extra health, he knows he's not dying because he knows priest numbers. Yeah. And he is grinding this down in a match that he's had in the high 90% for several turns now, but okay. he's just making sure of those little bits, I believe. I can... I, finally, I see Pavel's true game plan, and now I can agree with it. It was just not necessary to go with it earlier. Yes, the early, the other line of play of throwing Malagos and Pegasus down would probably have won, but the thing is, with Kun here, he has 100% lethal no matter what on the following turn. She's always nice. Yep. Just think if there's anything Aaron can do to heal himself out of range. I don't believe there is because it would have to be arm again to prevent it because it is going to be 16 from the Moonfire and then 20 from the ultimate infestation. So even arm again would not prevent lethal here from Aaron. That's a silly amount of damage. I would have to agree with you there, my friend. So Aaron has just shot the heck out of Pavel there. Pavel's down to 26. Yeah. He's still perfectly fine. Here. He's still trying his own. He's getting himself as high as possible, but it's not going to matter. He's giving it a jolly good shot. Looking, there's no way Pavel can fatigue. He'll burn a whole bunch of cards, but who cares? Yeah, he has won this game. As long as he spots lethal, which I am certain that he will. Yeah, he's played for this for the last yeah, million turns. Exactly. So this is what he's, he's going not going to mess this up. And he's going to set up a semi-final with Kranich, which... Old versus new. Except Kranich doesn't really count as old because he's been proceeding to win things for he's the last just, year as well. Yeah, he's just pretty constantly good throughout no matter what. And for Pavel, he's going to have, I would say, probably a harder time. Once the Warlock is banned out of the way from Kranich, this Druid is really going to be suffering. Maybe the Rogue could even suffer against the aggressive decks from Kranich. Pavel, I think, has got a better chance than Firebat had today. But for the current world champion, for a couple more weeks at least, he's got his work cut out.